Wow, Maryland got steamrolled tonight. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner, Mason Viner, Jack Rothenberg joining us finally. Got out of the press box a little bit. Mason, you flew out here from Florida to, to see what we were hoping to be a classic game. Not so much. Yeah, I should have stayed in Florida. Yep. Um, just walked out and got whacked right away, right off the bat. Josh Jackson continued his woes from the Temple game straight into a slant pass that went for about 85 yards. Just a wreck. All right. Jack, you've seen a, a lot of football. What would you make of this, your first big game here at Maryland? Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of high expectations for this one coming off of a ranked win against Syracuse. But then they were coming off that Temple loss. We didn't really know what to expect, what kind of team, but we found out what, what kind of team we were going to see tonight. Yeah. During the competitive part of this game, which ended near at the end of the third quarter, Maryland had eight first downs and 107 yards. You're not going to beat anybody like that. The tackling was bad. The defense couldn't get any pressure. Look, the good, Nick Cross looked good, and the punter used up about four years of punts in one game. Other than that, good God, this was not what we expected. Yeah. The, the Penn State people seem happy. They even left. I mean, yeah. uh, everybody left okay. this game. So it was the sixth largest crowd in Maryland history. How did the crowd look at the beginning of the game from the press box? It was packed. I mean, the whole student section was filled. There were, there were fans everywhere, but as soon as halftime hit, it was ghost town. Jackler's Law Group clients are happy clients, and here's why. Our lawyers are experienced, hardworking professionals who fight until you win, and you pay no fees until we do. If you've been injured in a car, truck, or train crash, we meet you where you are and when you can. If you've been in a crash, don't wait. Call the big dogs now. Let us handle the insurance company so you can focus on healing, and you'll see why we were named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Yep. All right, Mason, you're usually good for telling it how it is. How was it? Uh, not good at all. Definitely a, a smack in the face. It all starts up front, as football always does. And for Maryland, it just wasn't there. Um, usually I'm much more, I guess, outspoken after games like this, but I, I don't really know. There's not much left to say, I, other than, as the Penn State fans put it, how bad is Syracuse? Maryland had it going on there for a while. They lose a couple of pieces of an offensive line that only had five parts to begin with. And the offensive line couldn't do it. Maryland brings the linebackers. So you say the tackling's bad. I go, yeah, because they were rushing six, seven guys, and they didn't get home. They could not affect Penn State's I passing mean, efficiency, yeah. and the defensive backs yeah. got left out yeah, to dry that, and look horrible. That's where it comes from. How can you blitz more guys than Penn State has to block and not get to the quarterback at all? At all. Like, I, do, I, I, do I they don't have one it. sack in this game? Okay, so if you're not going to be animated, and you're going to be analytical, I watched Josh Jackson at Temple. He threw into bracketed coverages where they buzzed under the routes. Standing in the end zone, I see the same thing tonight. He goes back to the same route to the tight end. They've got a guy in front, a guy in back. That's the bracket. He tries to throw the ball chest high. It doesn't work. It wouldn't work at any level. I don't understand what he's not seeing. Yeah. What they say in the press box about that? I mean, it was just one awful throw after another. I mean can't really explain it. We just don't know what he was looking at with the different coverages. I mean, I don't know. It, it seemed like he was making his decisions pre-snap. I mean, he didn't really want to take the hits. He oh. wasn't going to stand in there the whole time and get, get right. rocked the whole game, so he made his decisions and he threw those balls. So The main one that you really have to look at is it's not that the slant plays aren't working or there's nobody open on yeah. any of these routes. It's this locked in and really stepping and trying to beat pressure by throwing the ball harder harder that's, that's never really the answer the answer is to stand in there and deliver passes where you lead the guy into the route especially on a sprint right. slant because they are sprint routes they're not right and then it, too, to Sean Savoy he dropped him 
Went right through his hands. Yeah. It just, I, I'd like to, to be more upset. I'd like to be more shocked. I guess for once I'm not. Uh, any closing thoughts as we have to get inside for the Loxley presser? I mean, I don't know what type, what type of team we're going to see next uh, next week against Rutgers, but they got to find something quick or uh, this season could go in a downward spiral. Yeah, uh, I think if they don't win next week, we're heading for two and ten. But you know, Rutgers isn't isn't a great isn't a great team. They no. should have something put together. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they pull out Tyler DeSue as their starter for next week because Piggy was not. Was, Piggy's wasn't, not the answer. No. And, you know, it's pretty crazy because after that Syracuse game, we were talking about all these high expectations for this team, and now after this big yeah. loss, it's, it's hey. where do we go from here? As our friend Bucky said, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Unfortunately, we drank the Kool-Aid. I'd like to thank Viner Forgates, Meyer Consulting Engineers, and, of course, Rick Jacklich, the big dog. Uh, Bruce, obviously away from the microphone today, but you could catch him on The Sports Maven, presented by Coons Ford tomorrow morning. That's 9 a.m. on 1300 CBS Sports Radio, and we'll be back with Terp Talk, Young Terps, and the new podcast, uh, The Wide World of Wayne, and I'm sure we'll be a lot more complaining about Maryland football. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Jordan saw on TV. I mean, there were there. At least the fans showed up. There were there were times where Six this place was completely crowd. filled, and it was a great environment before the game. But yeah. kind of reminds you of a few Maryland basketball games and a few of those old Maryland football games where the team just didn't show and you got blown out right away. Right away. All right. So from the field, that'll do it. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Terps.